Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now we just finished talking about arrangements or permutations and in this video we're going to start talking about something in the same um, in the same family but a slightly different idea called selections. Now a selection differs from an arrangement in that we do not concern ourselves with order when we talk about selections. So in other words a selection from a set S is a subset of S of a particular size. So we use C S K to denote the number of subsets of size K that are in a size S, and this is read S choose K. Now often I'm going to use a different notation. Uh, this says C S K, but the notation I'm actually going to use is this notation here. This bracket with S over K, and that, there's no um, line here. This is not a fraction. I'm just going to put S on the top and K on the bottom. This is the exact same thing, and this is read S choose K. Now this is going to be more intuitive later when we talk about the binomial theorem, because this is the form of the choice function um, as a binomial coefficient. But we use this to denote the number of subsets of size K that are in a set of size S. And now we can calculate this by a formula here. S choose K is going to equal S factorial over K factorial times S minus K factorial. And the way we can think about this is, is that if we talk about a permutation of SK, this is going to be equal to S choose K times K factorial, right? The reason is a permutation is taking all of the subsets of K and then permuting them. So for each subset of size K, there are K factorial permutations of that same subset. So that permutation is going to be, or in other words, there's going to be k factorial permutations for every one selection, right? For every one selection, I can take that subset that I've selected and I can permute it k factorial ways, and each of those are a different permutation over here. So dividing both sides by k factorial, we get our formula here, right? We knew that our permutation function was equal to s factorial over s minus k factorial. Right, so dividing k factorial over here, we get this closed formula for our choice function, or our selection function, s choose k. Okay. Now, a couple other little properties. Uh, we define 0 factorial to equal 1. So if, so if I look at something like s choose 0, this is going to be s factorial over 0 factorial s minus 0 factorial, which is this s factorial. This is going to be 1 over 0 factorial, or in other words, just 1. Right? Now this is very intuitive. Um, what this means is we're taking a set of size s and we're saying, well, how many subsets are there of size 0? And we know there's exactly one subset of size 0. It's the empty set. Right? Or if you're thinking of in terms of, of making a choice, you're saying, well, I have this set of size s. In how many ways can I choose zero of those elements? Well, there's only one way to do that. You just don't choose any of them. Right? There's not multiple ways where you can choose nothing. Okay? Now, we also define uh, s choose k to be zero for any k that is greater than s. Right? Or you know, we also say that if this k is uh, less than 0, but more or particularly when k is greater than s. And this makes sense, right? If k is bigger than s, this is saying, well, I have this set of s elements. How many ways are there for me to choose more than s of those out of my set of s elements? Well, there's zero ways to do that because I can never choose more than what I have. If I have five apples, there are zero ways for me to choose six of those apples. Now, if k is less than 0, it also makes sense. Um, if I have 5 apples, how many ways are me to choose negative 1 apples? And that doesn't really make sense. That's, um, that doesn't, yeah, that doesn't make sense, does it? Okay. Now, we have some additional properties. We have what's called the symmetry pro property. And what that is, is that we have s choose k is equal to s choose s minus k. And this just follows directly from our formula because these are both equal to s factorial over k factorial s minus k factorial. Right? We know this is the formula for this first one. Looking at the second one, well, this is just s factorial over s minus k factorial 
times s minus s minus k, which is just k factorial, right? So here the roles of k and s minus k are interchanging here in these terms in the denominator, uh, but we're going to get the same uh, the same formula, the same value for both of these choice functions. So this is called the symmetry property. Now we also have what's called Pascal's identity. I'll write it here as a theorem. And that is that s choose k is going to be equal to s minus 1 choose k plus s minus 1 choose k minus 1. Now we can think of this intuitively as well. Um, what we can say is, well, I'm looking at a set of size s, and I want to know how many ways there are for me to choose k of those objects. So let's consider one of those objects. Let's call it um, a, this object a in this set s. So if I look at just, at just looking at a, there's going to be s minus 1 choose k, ways for me to choose k elements, where a is not one of those k elements. And there's going to be s minus 1 choose k minus 1 ways for me to choose k minus 1 elements and then put a in there as well to get k total elements. So I'm just breaking up our choices of size k, I'm breaking up into two different scenarios, one where all the choices of size k do not contain my element a, and one where all the choices of size k do contain my element a. Now this is called Pascal's identity and it's very uh, important um, to derive the object that we call the Pascal's triangle. So in the next video I'm going to talk a little bit about the Pascal's triangle and after that we're going to jump in and do a bunch of examples using these choice functions and coming back and using the permutation function sum as well.